In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you all the skills and techniques needed to get your Necrons finished and painted from the Warhammer starter set. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to finish painting your Necrons from the 40k starter set. So this tutorial is a continuation from my getting started with 40k video where I showed you how to get your Necrons painted, ready for using on the tabletop. I now want to show you how to get them finished and the techniques and skills you need so you can continue to paint even more Necrons and grow your collection. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below and if you want to help support what I do you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you and I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. I would especially like to thank Gus and Roy Oliver Rez who have recently become my latest patrons. Thank you so much. I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Necrons in a certain order so you can get to grips with what I'm showing you more easily and by the time I've finished showing you everything I think you'll need to know you should have the knowledge and confidence to get your Necrons finished and also be able to build your collection. Our Necrons are already built and should already have some base colours on them which I showed you how to do in my getting started with the 40k video. So let's quickly go over what we've already done with our Necrons so you know you're ready to carry on with this tutorial. We first undercoated the Necrons using Chaos Black Spray. We then used some lead voucher and used a dry brush technique all over the Necrons so we can better see all the details underneath the main body sections. After that was done, we picked out all the details using Rune Lord Brass, lead voucher, Abaddon Black, Retributor Armor, and Tesseract Glow over Corax White where we wanted this cool energy glow. As well as using the paints we have from the Paints and Tools set, we are going to be using additional paints and brushes throughout this tutorial. I have been very careful in the choice of colours though and only pick the essential colours I think you'll need and that you'll find yourself using often. The first thing we're going to do is paint a couple more base colours using paints which were not included in the Paints and Tools set. The first additional base colour we want to add is Canoptech Alloy and we're going to be painting this on all the shoulder plates and heads of our Necrons. If you want to you can leave them Rune or Brass. The other base colour we want to paint is Warpstone Glow and this is used on any of the cables around the miniatures. Painting these extra colours on our Necrons will make it easier to pick out these details against everything else and make them look more interesting. Whilst painting, remember to thin your paints and paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any detail on our miniatures. And once we've finished doing that, we've got all our base colours down and we can start creating some definition. In this section I'll be going over creating definition and how we can use the shades to make the details easier to see. Even though our Necrons are fully painted and have lots of colours on them, they do look pretty flat. This is because there is no definition. We want to create definition to bring out all the details on our miniatures so they look less flat and more interesting to look at. So let me show you some things we can do to create that definition. The first way is to simply apply some shade to an area. Let's start off using some Norn Oil, applying this over all the silver details. When applying a shade, we only want to use enough to cover the area comfortably, as we don't want the shade to pull up too much in those areas. Any excess can be removed using your brush. Once the shade is dried, you can see that where it's settled, it's a lot darker than the more flatter areas, giving us that definition. Shades are a great way to create definition very easily and quickly on our miniatures but I do want to show you what else we can do with them and how we can use them to make our Necrons look more interesting. Our Necrons aren't going to be looking very factory fresh, considering they're ancient and have been gathering dirt and dust underground for eons. To help age our Necrons and create some grime, but again also create that definition we're after, let's use some Agrax Earthshade as an all over wash. 
Before we apply the shade, we want to thin it down with an equal amount of water. This is going to weaken the strength of the Agrax Earth shade so it doesn't overpower the colours we've already painted. Once the shade is dry, you can see that it's helped to dull down the metal, giving it some age but still creating definition, where it's dried in recesses and around details. One of the other things we can use the shades for is to create different coloured tones. And to do this on Anecrons, let's use some Reichland Flesh Shade as it is, and apply this only to half of the body sections. And when this is dried, you should be able to see the cool effect it's given us, like the metal has been exposed to heat and the elements. With that done, let's use Reichland Flesh Shade on any gold details. And finally, Norn Oil can be used again on all the cables we painted Warpstone Glow. Using different coloured shades really helps to create more variety and interest on our miniatures. You should now understand and be able to use the different coloured shades to create some interesting effects on our miniatures. Now we've learned how to create some definition on miniatures, we're able to bring out all those details making them easier to see. The next thing we can do to bring out all those features and details even more is to highlight. In this section I want to show you how we can create some highlights and how we can also use highlights to make things glow. When light shines on something we're able to see the details and areas more easily where that light hits an object. Let's see how we can replicate this on our miniatures. When painting miniatures the idea is to create shadows and highlights because this is how we see things in real life. And fundamentally this is what miniature painters are always trying to do. So we learn about dry brushing when painting the Necrons in the Getting Started video. And we can use the same technique to create some highlights on our miniatures. Let's use a small dry brush this time so we can be more precise with the dry brushing. The colour we're using is Roomfang Steel and just like before, remove as much of the paint as you can until it's no longer coming off onto the paper towel. Remember to take more care with the dry brush this time and build it up slowly because we don't want to get it all over the work we've already done. Being more intentional with this dry brush, we can get some highlights on details easily. Highlighting your miniatures really does make a massive difference, and I would always encourage people to give it a go. And you can carry on and continue to use the dry brushing method to highlight all your Necrons, but I do want to show you the more traditional way of highlighting as well, so you have the choice. To show you the more traditional method of highlighting, I'm going to be using the Scorpet Destroyers, because they're bigger and chunkier giving us a great opportunity to practice this technique. Let's get ready to highlight with our small layer brush using Marine Fang Steel. Let's thin this down on our palette first of all, and for highlighting I only use a small amount of water this time. We then want to remove some of the paint from our brush on some paper towel. This is going to give us more control and prevent painting thick blobby lines, which we don't want. When painting highlights, the easiest and quickest way to paint them is with the side of your brush. First angle your brush against an edge and run the brush along it to create the highlight. For the edges you can't do this, just take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlight. Remember removing that excess paint first will prevent those thick blobby lines. Just take your time, there's no rush, and for any lines that we're not completely happy with, we can just neaten them up using some Rune Lord Brass. Hopefully you can see that painting your highlights is achievable, even as a beginner. But if you do struggle with it, you can always just stick to the dry brushing method. Now you've had some practice highlighting, let's highlight the gun casing. Let's tidy things up with some Abaddon Black if you need to. We can then use Dawnstone to highlight the casing. I'm using a dry brush, but you can edge highlight if you want to. I now want to show you how we can make our glowy areas more glowy. Let's start by using Moot Green and highlight the edges around all the orbs around the body. We do this exactly how we highlighted the destroyer body, and this makes it look more like the green light is hitting the edges around it. The orbs we don't want to do this around is the orbs on the Gauss Flayer, as we want a more subtle transition from the black to Moot Green. To help with this we can use Warpstone Glow first of all, which is going to give us a softer glow effect. We want to make the lines a bit thicker this time though, so we can still see them once we painted the moot green. Now paint a thinner highlight using moot green like we previously did for the other orbs. 
I understand that this is a more difficult technique to do, but it is still achievable for new painters. And you can, if you want to, leave painting the glow effects for later when you feel more confident in the hobby. There's no rush. Let's finish this section highlighting the green cables. First paint a thick highlight using warpstone glow along the cable, and then a thinner highlight using moot green to finish. With that done, you should have a better idea of how we can highlight our miniatures and how we can use the same technique to create some source lighting and glow effects. Let me now show you how to get everything fully painted. In this section, let me show you what else you need to know to get your Necrons fully painted. Because our Necrons are all very similar and share the same kinds of details, we can use what we've learned already to get everything painted. But there are still a couple of things that you'll want to know how to paint and that includes all the blades on the Scorpet Destroyers and Necron Overlord. So you should have already painted any blades using Tesseract Glow over Corax White which I showed you in the Getting Started with 40k tutorial. Now we want to work on getting that cool alternative colour shift you see in the pictures. The first colour we're going to use is Warpstone Glow and we want to alternate where we paint this on each side so the darker areas are next to the lighter areas, creating a sharp contrast between the two halves of the blade. Remember, we should be thinning our paints. This is especially important when doing techniques like this, where we want some transparency, helping to create smoother transitions between the colours. The next colour we're going to use is Abaddon Black, and this is used to continue to darken our gradients. You want to try and have an equal spread of each colour. We can take full advantage of the translucency of the paints now to help blend our colours even more. Take your time using Warpstone Glow, a bad and black, a moot green between the relative colours. You can thin your paints a little more if you think you need to. Let's go the other way now and go lighter. Mix an equal amount of moot green and Corex white and paint this on the opposite ends of the gradient. You can help the blend with some moot green. Even though the Necrons seem pretty simple to paint, they do give us the opportunity to try out some more involved techniques that are really going to impress most people when you show them. Let's finish the blades now, starting by applying some Norn Oil directly into the recesses on the blade, being as neat as you can. Next highlight all the edges using Moot Green. Finish the blade using our mix of Moot Green and Corax White to highlight those edges around the lightest parts of the blade where it's difficult to see the moot green. You should now be able to paint all the blades including the Necron Overlord staff. Again you can wait to do this until you feel more confident. The same idea can be used to brighten our orbs rather than just leaving them the tesseract glow. We want to work to a lighter colour this time, first using an equal mix of moot green and Corax white and then Corex White is the lightest colour. Now we've gone through the whole process for getting all your Necrons fully painted, I want to finish this tutorial showing you how to get their bases done. In this final section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to get all the bases done. To do the bases, we're going to be using Astral Granite, which is a technical paint. It's great to use on bases because when it dries it has this texture to it that gives the impression of dirt or an area of ground. To apply it we can use this texture spreader. Take some of the astral granite straight from the pot using the big scoop. We can then spread it around using the smaller end being more precise with it. For any of the bases that have scenery already on them, take some time to get these painted however you think they should be painted. When the astral granite has dried, you'll be able to see the texture it's created, but we can take this a step further and create definition and highlights on our bases as well. First apply some Norn Oil over the dried astral granite and any of the base details like the rocks and rubble. Once the Norn Oil has fully dried, let's give all our bases a light dry brush using Screaming Skull. Finally, let's tidy up the base by painting the rim. I'm using Dawnstone here, but you could use a bad and black or another colour of your choice. With that done, you should now be able to get your own Necrons finished. 
and I know we used a lot more advanced techniques on our Necrons than we did with our Ultramarines, but it's still very achievable as a beginner if you take your time. So let's see how these Necrons turned out. Our Necrons are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own and continue to build up your collection. I've made a playlist of all the other tutorials on the channel that I think will be useful to you, so make sure to go and check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon, which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.